Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup present Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door. We're going to begin tonight's festivities on a scientific note with something that will save you a good deal of money. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, it seems that quite a few people have taken to turning off their refrigerators during this program. Yes, they've discovered they can deep freeze all sorts of things by just listening to Inner Sanctum. Letting their blood run cold. (laughs) Well, Mr. Host, that's quite an idea. Have you any other scientific suggestions? Oh, certainly, Mary. For instance, here's a way to cut down on your laundry bills. Instead of having the laundry starch your clothes, just put them on top of your radio Tuesday nights. In a sanctum, we'll scare them stiff. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it's my turn, Mr. Host, and I'd like to make a suggestion, too. It's about an easy way to get more enjoyment out of your teapot. Here's the whole trick. Just use Lipton tea. In every cup of piping hot Lipton's, there's extra tastiness waiting to delight you. And the reason is Lipton's grand brisk flavor. Brisk, you know, is the tea expert's own word for the tangy, full-bodied flavor of Lipton's. And what a pleasure that flavor is. No wonder more folks buy and enjoy Lipton's than any other brand of tea in the world. They've found, as you will, that Lipton's always has brisk flavor. It's never flat. Always lively and spirited, with the hearty zest of tea at its best. So next time, serve Lipton tea. Its brisk flavor gives you more contentment in every cup. Now, friends, lend an ear to tonight's story. An original radio play by Robert Newman called Blood of Cain. Starring two of your radio favorites, Mercedes McCambridge and Carl Swenson. A tale of blood spilled in hatred and vengeance. A blood that carries a curse that is as old as man. Hmm? You don't believe that's possible, eh? And suppose you put out all the lights, pull your chair up close, and listen. A small square, once fashionable, on the outskirts of New Orleans. The iron balconies where elegant ladies once sat are now rusty and sagging. The paint on the rambling houses is cracked and peeling, and grass grows between the cobblestones. The bayous and the jungle have crept close to it, and at night the cries of strange birds, the croaking of giant frogs can be heard. What was formerly a living portion of the old world has become a place of decay and death. More pigeons died this evening. I saw them towering up and up into the darkening sky as if to escape the pain gnawing at their vitals and then fall into the square and into the garden. I still didn't believe, couldn't let myself believe. And then I saw her standing in the shrubbery the bag from which she had been feeding them still in her hand. I knew then that I could wait no longer, that I had to find out. Louise. Eugene. The pigeons. There's something wrong with them. They're... Dying. Yes. But how? And why? I'm no chemist, but I'd, I'd say it was poison. Poison? But who would do that? Louise. Now listen to me, dear. Please listen. I love you. I've loved you since I first came down here. First met you. You know that. And you know that I'll understand. Now tell me, why have you been doing it? I? You're the only one who feeds them. The only one who could do it. Oh, no, I didn't. Louise, where are you? Grandfather. Oh, oh, my dear child, what is it? The pigeons. 
they're dying. It's the second day now. And Eugene said... He said what? Have you looked at any of them, Dr. Phillips? Examined them? Will you go into the house, my dear? I, I'll be along in just a minute. But, Grandfather... Please, please, dear. Yes, Grandfather. Of course. I'm very sorry you did this, Owen. Mentioned it to her. Did you examine any of the pigeons? I did. Poison. Probably from my laboratory. But then... Then you know... I know a great deal, Mr. Owen. I'm her grandfather... I think it would be very wise if you kept away from Louise. Did not see her again. What? Well, that's ridiculous. I, I love her. I'm and... sure you do. But perhaps I did not make myself clear. If you continue to see her, it might prove dangerous for you. <laughs> I didn't eat any supper that night. I went back to my room and sat there in the dark, staring at the shuttered, brooding house. About 11 o'clock, the door of the doctor's house opened quietly, and Louise came out. Without looking right or left, moving almost like a sleepwalker, she went up the street. I hesitated only a minute, and then I hurried down the stairs and after her. And just as I got downstairs, the door opened again, and... Is that you, Owen? Well, yes, Doctor. She just left the house. I was watching from the window. Yes, and... I know. She's done it several times, and this time I was determined to follow her and see where she goes. Look, she's hailing a cab. My car's right across the street. Quick. <laughs> Louise went in there. What, what kind of a place is that? Oh, dear, that smell. It's the smell of death. From the noise, I would say it was an abattoir. A slaughterhouse? Good Lord. But, but, but why? Why would she come down here in the dead of night? I like you, Owen. I think you know that. And it was for your own sake that I warned you to keep away from her. There are things that you do not... Well, that you cannot know about her. No. Well, we'll see. I'm going in and get her and find out from her. Well, just a moment. There she is, just inside the gate, talking to the watchman. No sense arguing about it, lady. I just can't let you in. But you must. You've got to. You always did before. That's just it. Now, once was all right, even twice. But, well, if you want to know the truth, the men have been complaining. Nobody exactly likes killing steers. But they say that the way you stand there watching them, well, well it makes them nervous. You've got to let me in. I'll make it worth your while. Now, Watching the killing. Me, I... I've just got orders from oh, that... Oh, that's awful. It's horrible. I'm, 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 I'm going in again. No, 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 no. In, in the state she's in, well, having you come on her suddenly would have a very bad effect. But uh, you wait here. I'll no, go. No, 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 Don't hit me, no. <laughs> Louise, what in... Uh, here. What, what, what happened to Watchman? This stone here on the temple. Louise. Why did you do this? I... I don't know. I had to get in here. He wouldn't let me in Take her out here. to the car, Owen. Come on, let's go. He <gasps> can't go now. Leave him lying there like that. He's... He's hurt. He may be dying. No, no, it's not serious. He's just stunned. We can phone for an ambulance as soon as we get home. But we've got to get her away from here immediately. <laughs> Sit down, Louise. Yes, Grandfather. I'm sorry I ran away like that, Eugene. But I suddenly felt strange. Ill. That's all right, Louise. You've been feeling that way quite often lately, haven't you? Yes. Yes, I have. Uh, just what makes this feeling so strange? Well, it, it's hard to describe. It's as if I weren't myself anymore. It's the opposite of sleepwalking. It's as if I were awake, but not really conscious. And I hear voices. Voices telling me to do things and whispering a name. A name that sounds like Jonard. Like what? You've been in my study reading my books. No, but I haven't, Grandfather. You always forbade me to... And how did you know that name? Well, whose name is it? 
And, well, what does it have to do with Louise? It's the name of a family which is almost extinct. And it is a name which means death. Well, what do you mean? I was always very interested in the Jeunard family for reasons of my own. And I've collected all the historical references to them that I could. These references start with the 13th and 14th century. But by the 15th century, they had become the traditional executioners of France. Executioners? And in those days, you know what that meant. It was a Jeunard who put the torch to Jeanne d'Arc. A Jeunard received a handsome request from Louis XI for services rendered. A Jeunard operated the guillotine during the French Revolution. Perhaps that's why the family migrated here after the fall of the Republic. They came here? Yes. Twenty-odd years ago, there were a whole series of particularly atrocious murders here. The murderer was finally caught and executed. His name was Max Jeunard. Why do you tell me all this? And why should I constantly seem to hear that name? Well, even when you were little, my dear, you used to have those strange fits, spells when you would do unpleasant things. Afterward, you could never remember them. Oh. Now, do you remember poisoning the pigeons and going to the slaughterhouse? What? Oh, no, well, no. Well, I've never discussed the matter with you because I thought it might actually implant the idea in your mind. I'd hope that if you were left alone, you'd outgrow it, but... But what? You still haven't told me what all this about the Jonas has to do with me. It has a great deal to do with you, my dear. You see, Max Jonat was your father. a girl with a real tradition in her family. A murderer for a father and a long line of ancestors who were real killer dealers. I was beginning to get a little worried about her. Fooling around, poisoning pigeons and things like that. But I can see now that there was method in her madness. After all, practice makes perfect. Good gracious, Mr. Host. Louise may turn out to be a very dangerous person. Yes, Mary. She's not the kind of a character you'd like to have ringing your doorbell. Well, I should say not. Why, usually, as our Lipton listeners know, a doorbell is one of the nicest, most friendly sounds there is. Because so often it means friends are dropping in for a visit. Of course, your first thought is to make them welcome. So after you've taken their coats and made them comfortable, pour them a cup of flavorful, spirited Lipton tea. You know, it's wonderful how Lipton's add sparkle to the conversation. For there's extra enjoyment in its grand, brisk flavor. Mm, each sip is brimming with such lively, full-bodied tanginess. Yes, serve your friends Lipton's when they call. And when you say goodbye to them at the door, you can be sure they'll come back for another visit and another cup of Lipton tea. That's a friendly suggestion, all right, Mary. And now, are we ready to get down to business again? The kind of business that Louise's family has specialized in for a good many years. Murder. Oh, I know that what she's been interested in so far is small fry, but I think from now on she'll really be cooking with gas. Just a moment later now. Sitting in Dr. Philippe's study, Louise and Eugene Owen stare at the elderly gentleman with shock and horror in their eyes. You mean my father was a murderer? Your father, and his father before him, back as far as the family's history can be traced. Well, I don't believe it. And even if it is true, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to think this need to kill can be passed on from generation to generation. Well, of course, Owen, there is absolutely no scientific basis for it. Still, how else can you explain some of the things that Louise has been doing? Oh, it's true, it's true. These spells that come over me when I don't know what I'm doing. That name which I never heard consciously until... Oh, no, it can't be true, it can't... Oh, Louise, dear. No, Eugene, you... don't. Don't come near me. Don't touch me. If there's even a chance that it's so... Well, I didn't want to tell you. I, I was never very close to your father because he was a rather strange son-in-law... But if you want to know more about him, there is someone you should talk to. Joel Ferguson, down on Gaylord Street. He was the very last person to see your father alive. Yes, 
Mr. Ferguson? Yes. Who is it? My name is Louise Philippe. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. Just a second. Come in. In here. Thank you. What did you say your name was again? Louise Philippe. At least that's what I always believed it was. Until yesterday. And then I discovered that my name was Louise Jonas. Jonas? Not Max Jonas? Yes. He was my father. What do you want of me after all these years? It wasn't my fault. You know it wasn't my fault. I, I only did what I had to do. I don't know what you mean. I was told that you were the last person to see him alive. And that perhaps you could tell me something about him. Yes. There are things that I can tell you. That he was evil, but that he knew he was evil. There was a curse on him that made him do the things he did do. Voices that whispered in his ear, told him to kill, made him kill. Voices? And in the end, at the last minute, he thanked me. He thanked you for what? For stopping him from doing any more killing in the only way he could be stopped. And when I put the rope around his neck... The, the rope? I was the state executioner. It was I who hanged him. You... You killed my father. I, I only carried out the sentence that was passed on him. And, and why... Why are you looking at me that way? I didn't know. I only came here to see you because... You're lying. If you were his daughter, then you were like him... And you came down here to kill me. Kill you? That, that knife there in your bag. Huh? I didn't even know it was there. You're lying. Keep away from me. Keep away. But I didn't come down here to kill you. Then stop staring at me like that. Put that knife away. No, no, don't come near me. No, no. Oh, good evening, Mr. Owen. Oh, where's Miss Louise Benson? I must see her right away. I I'm sorry, sir, but she's not in. She went out about a half an hour ago. Oh, uh, well, where did she go? I'm afraid I don't know, sir. She didn't say. Well, what about Dr. Philippe? He's not in either, sir. He left right after Miss Louise as soon as he heard that she'd gone out. Oh? It seemed to me, sir, he looked rather worried. He said something about uh, Mr. Ferguson. Ferguson? Great Scott! If she went down... Thank you. Who's that? I'm looking for Miss Louise Philippe. I was told that she... Is that you, Dr. Philippe? Yes, Eugene. Is she here? Yes, she's here. But you're too late, just as I was too late. What? What, what do you mean? Inside there. See for yourself. Oh, don't tell me that anything's happened. Good. Lord. Louise. She won't answer you. That's the way I found her when I got here. Sitting there with a knife in her hand and Ferguson lying across the table, dead. Eugene. Louise. Eugene. Oh, Louise, Eugene. darling. Oh, why did you do it? Do... Do what? Ferguson. Dead? Yes, dear. Didn't you do it? I don't know. I didn't even know who he was when I came down here. And I found out that it was he who executed my father. And I started to hear those voices. Voices telling me to kill, that I had to kill. Then there was a knife in my hand. Oh, I can't remember. Voices. That's what Max said at the trial. It was the only defense he offered, but that he heard voices telling him to kill. It didn't save him. But in your case, a woman... What are you saying? Well, there's no sense even trying to escape. That would only make things worse, you know that? Yes, Grandfather. Except that there is only one way that things could be maybe worse. That is, if I were allowed to live. But, Louise, don't say that. You must... Oh, it's true, Eugene. 
for centuries to be a Jonah meant to bear the mark of Cain. Well, I'm the last of the Jonahs, and there must never be another. Well, I had not gone quite that far, my dear, but perhaps you're right. I am right. To my grandfather, Eugene. Louise, come back. Wait. No, no, no. Let her go, Eugene. She's my own flesh and blood. But I think that may be the best way after all. Yes? Well, we'll see. Louise! Wait, please! It's no use, Eugene. It's all very clear. Clear as witches, Bru. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Maybe it's because of our love that I understand. Maybe that was what was wrong with the Jonas. They never knew love, only hatred. But there is a cure. It lies there, in the river. Louise. No, please, dear. There's a curse on me, on all the Jonas that ever were. You're right. There is a curse, but not the kind that you think, dear. Listen, I was at the library all afternoon reading, and I think I understand now, for the first time. You understand what? The nature of the curse and how it can be ended, because it can be ended in only one way. Eugene? Is that you? Eugene? No, Grandfather. It's not Eugene. Louise, why, I thought you... Why did you come back here to Ferguson's place? I don't know, Grandfather. The voices, the call in my blood, it's too strong. I tried, I wanted to end it finally and completely, either in the river or with the police... But I couldn't. You mean you're not going to give yourself up? No, Grandfather. I'm not going to give myself up. But that's not all I mean. Louise, you still got that knife. Yes, Grandfather. Walking up the street, realizing that I was still holding it, that it was red with blood. I think it was then that I knew for the first time what it meant to be a Jonah. <laughs> Look, Louise, you're completely distraught. That, that's only natural. But now, look, you put that knife down and let me take you home. I'll give you something that'll help you sleep and then... No, tomorrow... Grandfather, you won't give me anything. Ever again. Well, Louise, you... you're not going to kill me. Yes, Grandfather, that's just what I'm going to oh, do. Oh, no, please don't... No, don't try to get away. I'm younger Louise, and quicker for than you. Sake, Louise. Just one quick... No, 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 Louise, no, 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 listen to me. Listen carefully. You can't kill me. There's nothing driving you to do it. You see, you're not a Jolant. What are you saying? It's true. I, I am a Jonat. Max Jonat was my son. But you're not evenly, distantly re related to us. You're lying. You're lying. You're just saying that. No, no, that. no. no. I, I swear it's true. I changed my name when I studied medicine to avoid the stigma. But Max kept it. Your father was Louis Martin, the judge. You're lying. How is that possible? But because I adopted you after your father's death. For a reason. It was your father who condemned Max to death. He didn't know Max was my son, and I didn't tell him until later. Your mother died when you were born, and I, I was your father's physician. And when he was desperately ill, I offered to adopt you and take care of you. And then when the papers were signed, I told him who I was, what I was going to do, that I was going to destroy you to avenge my son. And that's what killed him. But all those horrible things I've been doing, poisoning the pigeons, killing you Ferguson... You haven't been doing them. It was I who did them. Using drugs and suggestion to make you believe that it was you. So that you would either destroy yourself or... Oh, thank heaven, Eugene! Eugene, did you hear? Yes, dearest, I, I heard. And I told you, didn't I? Eugene! So it was a trick. A trick to trap me. Yes, doctor, it was. I was at the library and at City Hall all day looking up the records. Here, drop that knife. No, Owen. This won't be as poetic a death as the one I'd planned for her, but... The, the lights! Louise, put the lights out! Oh, that won't help you. Either of you. You won't get away. I'll find you in the light or in the darkness. And... Ah, there you are. Die, then. Now you'll die! Uh, die! Die! Louise! It's not I! It's no. not you! What did... Then who... Let go of me! Let go of me! Lights! Louise, quickly! Eugene, what happened? Who did he... 
Ferguson. Yes. He stumbled into him in the darkness, thought it was one of us. Then he must have tripped. The knife. He must have fallen on the knife. Well, somehow it... It seems only right that the last of the Jounals, who killed so many, should be destroyed by the dead. <laughs> You were a character we certainly could use on this program. But now at least you've got the perfect answer for the rest of your family when you meet them in the... wherever it is that dead murderers congregate. When they ask you who you were with last night, you can always say, that was no lady, that was my knife. <laughs> well, I'm glad you could put a new point on that old joke, Mr. Host. Oh, I like to sharpen up an old saw now and then, Mary. <laughs> well, let me see what I can do along those lines. Um, how about the best things in life are tea? Mary, <laughs> I'm afraid your enthusiasm for Lipton's has got the best of you. <laughs> well, maybe you're right, Mr. Host. But it's so easy to be enthusiastic about Lipton's. Once you taste that marvelous, brisk flavor, you can't help being a real Lipton fan. And that lively, zestful taste is something you folks should start to enjoy right now. Next time you visit the grocers, get a package of Lipton tea. Try it. I know you'll enjoy it. May I add a word of advice, friends? If you should happen to bump into an elderly gentleman dressed all in black on a dark street some night, don't get into an argument with him. Especially if he happens to be carrying a blood-stained knife. After all, you can end up just as stiff if you're dead right as if you're dead wrong. <laughs> Oh, by the way, this month's Inner Sanctum mystery novel is The Pavilion by Hilda Lawrence. And next week's Inner Sanctum story, brought to you by the makers of Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup, and directed by Hyman Brown. Next week's story is called Skeleton Bay. It's about a lady novelist who writes murder mysteries until she decides she'd rather be a character instead of an author... She chooses Skeleton Bay as a vacation spot, but it turns out to be her last resort. <laughs> now join us next Tuesday on Skeleton Bay. Until then, friends, good night. Pleasant dreams? Mm? <laughs> Ready in a jiffy and as tasty as can be. That's Lipton's Noodle Soup. It's a grand chickeny tasting broth full of tender golden noodles. You'll love its fresh cooked, homemade flavor. And Lipton's Noodle Soup is ready to serve in a few quick minutes. It's economical, too. It costs less and makes lots more than canned soups. Ask your grocer for Lipton's Noodle Soup mix tomorrow. And don't forget to tune in next Tuesday night for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. All names and characters used on Inner Sanctum are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.